the personnel line items have a 3% increase as well as a 2% increase on top of that. Is that accurate? Correct. And so could you talk about that? Um, yes, we discussed this in committee. Um, the, there was a, a request to um, explain the 5% increase in the personnel line for um, the proposed budget for 1920. 3% uh, of that allocation is the cost of living increase. And the 2% that's on top of that is to accomplish uh, the second phase of our um, consulting uh, research project that was completed last year with the recommendation to make amendments to our salary schedules. So there are still a few positions that remain to have adjustments made to the, the base salary and to those ranges. And uh, that's what the balance of that fund is for, is to accomplish um, that project, which is what that other 2% is for. And that's for um, all librarian, all non-librarian, and custodial salaries? Correct. And then uh, my other question was, um, so we used about, as I'm understanding it, in the 17-18 fiscal year budget, we used about 90% or 85% all in of what we budgeted, we actually spent. I'm looking at, uh, I think it's called, what well, Stuart, was, Stuart was kind enough to give me a copy. Um, budget versus actual expenses, 17, 18, 18, 19, and proposed budget, 19, 20. It's this one. The second to last column. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So um, <clears throat> I recall, <clears throat> excuse me, that um, I'd ask like if we if we didn't spend our full budget uh, in 1718 and the 1819, you said I think we're on track to spend 100 percent, or maybe we're on track to a little bit less. Right now we're at 86.69 percent. If we were, if it was balanced out, it would be at 91.6 percent. If you're, yeah, you know, okay. working with one month or less. Right. So then, do we think we'll get to 100 percent of budget for this fiscal year? We'll get to like 95 percent. What's your best guess as to where we'll end up? I mean, we budget we budget for 100 percent of our expenses, so. Um, we're we're trending we're trending very close to being 100 percent of our budget this year. Is that what you said, Lisa? No, I said yeah. if we look at yeah. through May. Okay. It's uh, at 80. Right, and then if we were to balance it out, it's 86.69 percent, I think, right here. Well, if we were spending the same amount of money every month. <coughs> we'd be at 91 percent okay we've actually sped whatever the figure is 87 mm -hmm. 86.5 right there in 11 out of the 12 uh, months there are some expenditures in the month of june that are disproportionate to the monthly average yeah because some bills come in at the end of the fiscal year sure so that's you know, that's why it, the expectation is mm -hmm. we'll be above 95 percent, somewhere between 95 and 100 percent of the budgeted amount for the current year when we look at 12 months instead of 11 months. So, you know, that's a that's a projection, though. Um, the the challenge is always that you. If you manage carefully, you've budgeted based on what you think you're going to need, but you also look for ways that you don't need to spend every penny sure. unless you need to. And so, you know, it's, uh, it's been common practice um, to manage um, so that not every nickel is spent. Um, this year, we're closer to the actual budgeted amount mm -hmm. or expect to be than we've been in some recent past years. That's partly a product of having reduced the levy the last several years. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if when you reduce the levy year over year several times, you're going to get closer and closer to the budgeted amount, and that's what's occurring. I just on the spend side, just for personnel, um, if we're at 80 some percent now 11 months in and we expect to be at the mid 90s you tell me like personnel wise 
what percentage of our budget do you think we're actually going to spend just for personnel for this fiscal year? We're at 88.5 right now, sure. out of 91% of the year. And um, I anticipate that we're going to get, you know, pretty close to the high 90s by the time that this is the end of the fiscal year is in. Okay. And I think that's pretty satisfactory if you look at the trending over the past years from, from where we've been. And I know it wasn't your budget a couple of years ago. Um, okay. Thank you. It, to me, if I may add to the, as an observation, if you're close to the amount that you've budgeted for, that seems like very prudent budgeting it seems like accurate budgeting to me if we go over that amount it would seem like that would be and if it, that had been a trend i guess in the past periods but it seems like we're budgeting the board has been budgeting pretty accurately would you i mean so my agree? yeah my point was we've been budgeting we've been coming in under budget and so then we've had a surplus um, so this year I'm trying to get a sense as to how close we come to budget and if it's 95 percent or 96 or 90 or whatever it's going to be mm -hmm. right um, because if we've been coming in under budget I don't want to generate I don't want to have a surplus Certainly. to dump into the you know, special reserve fund again. And it's been discussed, yeah. sorry, before, like in the past, yeah. before you were on the board, um, in recent years we had this major construction project. And so there were times within that construction phase where we had to budget to make sure we covered expenses, but not knowing if the construction was going to impede on the expenditure yeah. of things that would be uh, part there's of the There's another variable. Yeah. So, yeah. so it too, wasn't about yeah, going over, it was over. more being under. I there's see. another yeah. significant variable, and that is every time you go through the process of searching and hiring a new director, there are some personnel decisions that tend to remain on hold to allow the new director to make decisions about staffing. So we had, we had a period of time when Ellen Clark decided to resign as director. We had interim directors for a period of time. And some of the, part of the reason Ellen retired when she did was so that a new director could fill positions that she anticipated would be needed, to, to, would need to be filled in the coming two years after her retirement. We had the unfortunate experience of hiring a new director who didn't stay long. That repeated the process, and some of the personnel decisions were extended even further. So you budget on the basis of what you think is going to be, I mean, we're budgeting now for next year. When we were in this position two years ago, we were also starting a new search because our director had just left. Our new director had just left. She only stayed a year. That tends to cause you to be under budget on personnel because of positions you don't move forward on that you want the person who's running the library for you to have control of. So it tends to, that's one of the major issues that occurs when you have a director search occurring twice in a three-year period. It tends to push those numbers down, down a little bit. Because you're not um, having the cost of a that's salary. Just, that's just how it, you know, how it happens when you're in that position. We didn't intend to be in that position. We thought we were hiring a director for long term, and it didn't work out that way. Uh, for a lot of reasons, she decided she wanted to go back to managing children's services, and as a result, we needed to hire, we needed to go search again. That put everything in personnel somewhat on hold for a period of time. Well, Ron, I'm looking at this year's budget, and we're going to probably come about 4% under what was budgeted, which I think is fair and prudent. Mm -hmm. If you're at 100 percent, there's no way there's no to question. know, and yeah. you don't know who's going to retire because yeah. the staff tends to be senior. So I, I, mm -hmm. I, I think it's, I think in terms of this year's budget, and it's right on. Mm -hmm. And you're on the committee, and we're on the committee, and we can make sure it continues to be right on. Working with the director. Oh, last question. Um, 
Uh, and I'd missed the second one for my uh, kindergarten graduate, for my daughter's kindergarten graduation, I should say. So I'm sorry I had to miss it. But uh, the first one, we talked a little bit about um, Sunday hours and uh, that we were paying time and a half, and we thought, did that get incorporated into this at all, or did that conversation? No, that'll, that'll be policy, and that'll be under the director's purview. We set the, he sets the budget, and then we don't micromanage, we give suggestions, but I think right now what he's doing is an audit of who's coming in, when and where, and this summer it's gonna probably be off a little bit because it's Sunday hours are down, but you can speak to that better than I can. We'll continue to study that process. Yes, it's definitely something that I want to I want to pay very close attention to. Okay. Yeah. Vote. Any other questions regarding the budget? No. Okay. No. Trustee Riddle. Yes. Trustee Jones. No. Trustee. Yes. Rogers. Yes. <laughs> Trustee Wolf. Aye. Trustee McDonald. Aye. And Trustee Barshes. Yes. Next is the resolution amending number 2018-19-201, amending a plan and estimating costs. This resolution is behind number six. And what it does is basically outlines potential long-range capital fund expenditures in the Special Reserve Building and Equipment B&E Fund. And those are based on the 2018 study, the estimates in terms of capital facilities assessment report. Talk a little bit more. Right. So um, I reviewed FQC's report. Um, I had circulated that to you all for your review as well. Um, uh, just to, to refresh your memory about that. Um, typically what would be included in a facilities assessment report are the building at, um, elements and infrastructure um, for long-range capital planning. And they can include but are not limited to um, the concrete, masonry, metals, wood, thermal and moisture, roof, windows, doors, finishes, equipment, furnishings, special construction, elevators, fire protection, plumbing, HVAC, the geothermal system, our electrical technology, electronic security, earthwork, <laughs> the overall site, and our utilities. That's kind of the, the scope of the building envelope, our property, our physical capital assets. Um, so that study, um, its goal was to evaluate all of those resources and to make a recommendation um, for long-term long maintenance of those. Um, I, 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 I have to say that I, I think that that, um, that study is a little conservative in, in its findings. It wasn't as comprehensive as I would have hoped that it would have included based upon past experience I've had with those reports. Um, it's not my place here to criticize that report. It's the report that I'm working from. Um, that said, I think that there are a number of things that still remain to be considered as part of our uh, facilities assessment. Um, and any future renovation that we complete, um, I'd want to make sure that we continue to do a deeper study of that. One of the things that I would look for in, in a capital assessment report like this would be a table that would outline what all of those assets are individually and would set forth a cost escalation or create a formula um, that would help us to understand, you know, what the opportunity cost would be for um, performing some of that work. So, for example, um, there was a recommendation that we would replace uh, the roof. Um, if, if the uh, roof had recently been replaced, as we discussed earlier this evening, there are, you know, nine roofs um, that remain to be uh, updated. Um, if we had a time frame for when we wanted to look at those, we could see that, you know, after a course of maybe five to seven years, there would be um, an opportunity cost that if we don't do it now as part of a general renovation here on this project, if we were to wait and do it as part of something else, that might incur additional expenses. Um, a tool like that would allow us to, to do, I think, a closer study of all of that. But in any event, absent that information, um, what we have before us here today, I think, is still a very saleable plan and includes some really uh, valuable information um, about the building and um, about some opportunities that the library has for eligible capital expenditures. So what you have before you tonight um, in this resolution amending a plan is a document that looks actually quite similar to the plan that we adopted last year. Um, the scope of this plan um, ranges 
as far as what we've included in terms of technology, in terms of our relationship with um, CCS and our automated uh, material handling system, our integrated library system. So A is technology, B is um, our integrated library system, the way that we circulate our resources. C is um, a look at the overall um, equipment of the building, um, infrastructure improvements. It can include everything from HVAC to elevators. Item D is uh, interior uh, furnishings, um, including environmental and ergonomic and safety concerns. Item E um, incorporates um, concerns related to the building's entrances and exits, as well as parking flow and, and traffic concerns. Um, item F includes um, all of our wayfinding signage and communications related matters. Item G includes um, the exterior, and we've included um, this item in here again this year because it incorporates the um, outdoor renovation project that's currently in progress. Uh, that bridges fiscal years, so until the audited financials come in um, at the end of this year, I think it's appropriate that we retain uh, the estimated costs in, in this project uh, line for item G, and also recognize that while we're making these improvements today, um, we will have to maintain these, uh, these resources that we're putting in, and there will be costs.